good if I added myself actually into the stream. Now, it's good to be here uh, after what was um, an interesting an interesting game, um, for sure. There's, there's things that we can look at and maybe go, um, we need to improve on. In fact, there's a lot of things we can say we need to improve on. Um, there's things I'm looking at where I go, we probably need to um, be looking at the game and saying there's a lot of positives to take away from it. Of course, 1-1 given when we scored, is unfortunate. Um, it, it took me back to Hull altogether. Um, it wasn't quite as quick as that, though, um, to concede. But that being said, that being said, um, Forrest did concede 87 minutes into the game. They scored 81 minutes into the game. And it was a bit frustrating. It was a bit frustrating. Um, not a bad team performance. I'm not here to have a moan. I'll never be here to have a moan because I'm an optimistic person regardless. Now, shirt watch today. Charlotte Khan, I know you're listening at some point. Um, can you guess the shirt? It is Labatt's. Yeah, old style. Now, 32 of you in. I'm aware that it's going to be a quieter one today. I know it's late. Uh, I know that a lot of you might actually still be travelling or maybe you're still out drinking. Um, I won't tell anybody. But if you are out drinking at the moment, um, don't worry. It's OK. You can catch up with me in the morning. Um, I'll let you off just this one time, just this one time. Um, now, it's good to be here and talking about Forrest. We're going to talk about Nia Carte first. Now, for me, we needed Nia Carte today. Should should we have had Nia Carte, that last goal wouldn't have happened. Should we have had Nia Carte, I wouldn't have been so worried about pace in our defence, which is a problem for me. And it's a concern that I've got, considering the, the threat that Premier League strikers and forwards and midfielders will present to our defence. So, not worried, not worried, but it was a concern today against players like um, Damari Gray, um, whose name I've mispronounced on TalkSport and not to write at all. Um, but certain players, um, I just thought it's a shame uh, because they're good players, but things they need to improve on as individuals. Even in Brian, near Carte, looking like he's going to be out for months, months, um, as as, um, as Steve Cooper said. So a bit of a blow. Um, but as I told you all, it's a hamstring. I know people were saying it was a cramp, but I did say it's a hamstring injury. Um, and it seems that when he's gone back to, to play, and potentially I think it looked like he blocked a shot, um, it made it a lot worse. So um, it's certainly a blow. Um, and he's going to be out for some time. So Nottingham Forest at the moment, they're looking at bringing in uh, Willy Bolly um, from Wolves, potentially, as a backup. So um, we'll have to wait and see. But Julian Biancone is ready, ready to play whenever anyway. Um, and he can play in that position if needs be. Um, we did ride a look a little bit in the first 20 minutes. We weren't that impressive, but I think you... You go, anybody goes in front of a, a Goodison. I mean, even as a commentator that wasn't even commentating the full game... Um, you felt nervous and you're not even on the pitch. Um, so to be on that pitch, lots of nerves um, and against an Everton side that really, really wanted it, albeit you probably couldn't tell that much from some of their work today. Um, yeah, it was unfortunate, uh, I think, for, for Everton to have not gone maybe 1-0 up in that first 20. Um, it reminded me of being back at Newcastle. Um, but that being said, that being said, after maybe first 15, 20 minutes, Forrest looked a lot better. Um, a lot of the time taking balls from um, Everton in the midfield, you know, Anthony Gordon perhaps just uh, not really releasing the ball as quick as he should do. And then Lewis O'Brien tracking him back or Lingard or whoever and taking it off him. So, and equally, I think in that first half, I think Awani probably should have took his chances quicker. I don't think it was a problem with delivery. I think he had a lot of delivery. Um, but that being said, when he did have the opportunity to, sc to score or have a shot at least, because a shot is better than no shot, right? I'd rather him just get the shot in. Um, and he just didn't do that, which concerned me a little bit. So, um, But that's something he's going to work on. It's something he's going to work on. I just thought he held on to the ball for way too long and you can't afford to do that um, against a team that's got... You've got to give it to Everton. They've got some pace in the forwards. Um, so a counter-attack pretty lethal towards Forrest. Um, but that's how it is. That's how it is. Um, lots of things to learn from today, albeit very good um, times for the team. There's lots of good things to take away from it. There's also a lot of things you can take from it that are constructive um, and things that need to be worked on. And I just want to say as well, um, Everton they didn't have a terrible game. I just don't think they've got the right manager. I said this on TalkSport as well. If any of you do want to have a, a little bit of a listen um, to that TalkSport interview, you can. 
um, I'll make sure that you can, um, I'll put the link um, down in the description for anybody that is interested. Um, I'll, I'll kind of share that um, on here later on. But as I say, this is not an awful game, not an awful game, but we're going to talk about that defence because I know it's a controversial area. Um, I don't want to be rash in anything I say. I don't want anybody else to be rash in the things they say. There's things they can work on that is workable, if that's you know a word in that phrase. But um, there's things they can do now that will change the next game and make them better as players, um, from my observation. I'm not an ex-professional footballer. I'm not a manager or a coach. So take my opinion with a pinch of salt. But I will just give my thoughts on this. Now, Andrew, Jack, Chris, NFFC Player Watch, Richard, Harold, Lee, Darth Brexit, um, Awesome Astronomy. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second. I hope you're doing well. Robert, Maliti, um, Jack, Ant, Gamer316, Mark4, um, Orzalels. I can't even say that. Um, everybody, welcome to the the, um, the chat. The 75 of you in, I'm amazed because it is a bit of a, it's going to be a bit of a quiet one. I know people still traveling or tired. <clears throat> now, um, and uh, Warren also, good evening to you. Um, Let's talk about the defence, because I know people are asking questions about Lingard. Now, you'll all want my honest opinion on this because you've joined um, the stream. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna say this because I've met a lot of these players or said hello to them very briefly or had a chat with them or, or just seen them training. You know, I will just say, I think that Worrell is an outstanding servant to the club. I think he's got a great and I want you to hear me out on this because it's not going to end with what I'm saying now. I think he's a great servant. I think he has a great ethos and an attitude. And I think he's the right candidate for captain of the club. Right? That being said, that being said, the performance today and in other games as well, you know, maybe Wembley and most of last season, it wasn't quite up there with how we know he can perform. You know, because we know, come on, we know that Worrell is a great, great, um, a great athlete, a great defender. He's passionate um, and he loves Forrest. You saw that in the games against Leicester. You saw it in the games against, you saw it in massive games, you know, and he's been there for us throughout these years and he's improved year on year. But there's an issue with pace in that, that back three. You know, you've got Steve Cook, who's pushing 33. You've got Scott McKenna, who, to be fair to Scott McKenna, I always saw him look over his shoulder or look just in front of him. He always made sure there was two metres between him and Anthony Gordon. And to be fair to him, regardless of his pace, he never gave up and he always prepared. But Joe Worrell, for me, too rash today. Um, not really looking and preparing for a run um, from maybe Demari, um, Demari Gray or Anthony Gordon. And that's one of those things. But you can work on that. You can work on that by asking Scott McKenna about it. There's nothing embarrassing about Worrell saying to McKenna, how did you prepare to, to you know, fight against um, Anthony Gordon, a £60 million young midfielder from Everton who was an absolute class? You know, how do you do that? Well, you do that by making sure you're watching the player as he's making the wrong, keeping on sideways and then looking to make sure there's a good metre or two in, you know, beside you both. Because if you know he's two times quicker than you, you've got to be two times away from him. Um, but but this is things that they can work on. And I don't know how you all feel about that. Um, but I just think we need to be careful of diving in a lot as well. Hands on the players. I think Ryan Yates was played a blinder today. I think he was brilliant. Um, I think he was, I thought he really, really came back into the team well. Um, and to consider he's just been on injury, He's been brilliant today. Um, but that being said, too handsy at times with, with other players, just hands all over them or pushing them. In the Premier League, you will not get away with that. You will not get away with that. And we can't be conceding set pieces because you saw all today. Everton had some dangerous set pieces. When they had a free kick or a corner, they were whipping it right into the top corner of those goals. You know, maybe a couple of opportunities there. They could have scored a couple of times if we didn't have Henderson. They would have scored, you know. So um, I think I think we've got to be careful how many set pieces we concede um, because it does look like we were a little bit weak on the marking at times. But that being said, I think the game was good. And this isn't me having a moan either. This is just things I think we can improve on. Other than that, I think the defence was solid a lot of the time, made some good tackles, albeit a few stupid things that they did every now and then. 
Um, but but yeah, you know, um, I thought overall Forest played good. Um, things you can take out of it, positives wise, as Steve Cooper said. Um, but things you can also, you know, <clears throat> you can say that we probably could do better on. So, um, and I wouldn't say Worrell's necessarily the weaker link. Um, I, I think that's I think that's harsh, Andrew. And I'm not saying that as a, a an attack on your opinion. Um, but I know that other people have said it. I don't think he's the weak link. I don't think there necessarily is a weak link. I just think there's people who, regardless of their position, need to be told what they need to be improving on. So that's just my that's just my opinion on it. Um, Sebastian, Gabriel, Cloco, Jack, Jay, everybody that's joining in, my big... Oh, come on, my friend Wolverine. We need to collaborate, my friend. People have been saying it for ages, so I hope you're doing well. Uh, Morgan Gibbs White, solid from the get go. Enjoyed that. And yes, don't forget to hit the like button. Um, this video is sponsored by the one and only. You know it. That's right. That's right. It's not this. That's not the PowerPoint I was looking for. See, technical difficulties. Beep, boop, beep, boop. This video is sponsored by the wonderful Remedy Beast. Um, so check them out if you can. But yeah, so um, let's talk. Let's talk because obviously lots happened today. Um, but things we can take about from this game that are positive, um, but not quick enough in the defence. I said it on Talk Sport. I said you've got to give them uh, Damari Gray, and you've got to give Anthony Gordon some. Um, you know, even Rondon at times. You've got to give them um, credit because they were fantastic. Couple of shots that they were unlucky not to score. Um, Gordon had one of his um, shots to the bottom right post, just saved by Hendo. So, you know what? They had a good game. Unlucky to not score a couple more, but Forrest equally, if they'd just taken the chances a little bit more with a one e particularly that first half, they could have been 2-0 up at the first half. So, um, yeah, pretty difficult, but, um, you know, never underestimate your opponents. I don't think that Everton weren't beatable today, um, but there's, there's things that we weren't prepared for, and it's that pace up front. We've got to get used to that, given the fact that we're in the Premier League now. So this is things we're going to have to adapt to. <clears throat> so um, let's have a look. Lingard needs to up his game. Um, I still don't think Lingard's fit enough. That's another thing I said on TalkSport. I think I probably would have had maybe Lingard off in the 60th minute uh, and, um, or 70th minute and put Morgan Gibbs White in his position rather than having a 1E e off because as much as a 1E e wasn't poor because he had a physical presence, but he, he didn't release quick enough, um, I would have probably had Dennis instead and then Morgan gives White in for Lingard. I think Lingard played good, you know, and did his thing at times, but he just didn't look fit enough. He didn't look really on it uh, as much as I thought he would be. Um, so, um, yeah, for me, Morgan gives White should have come on in that position. And the Everton fans were laughing at him for a couple of touches he made to start with, and they were soon very quiet um, when it all um, when it all kicked off and he started to to do skills in front of the away fans. So. Yeah, some player, but you can just tell that he wants to play at Forest. And if that's how you're going to make your opening five, ten minutes of a debut, um, I'd be very excited to see his first 90. Um, Dor, hope you had a good day as well, my friend. Um, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't get to catch up with you. Um, you know, but I hope you started, weren't scrapping today. I know what you're like. You and bloody you and bloody Liverpool fans and Everton fans. I know what you're like, Dor. Always scrapping. Um I know you, Dor, scrapping with all the fans. Um, bless you, mate. I hope you're doing good. Um, thank you for joining the stream also. It'd be good to have you on as a guest at some point if you're interested. Um, back to the market. We need central defenders with pace. Biancone is still an option. Um, you're all, I don't want to, pardon me, I don't want to be that guy. I know we've got Biancone. Um, but I did say I'd rather have Panzo here. And I know that... And it was really tough because I think Panzo does need the game time and I think it'll benefit him because he's young. But in times like this, you need a player like Panzo. And I think he would have been really good to have, to be honest. But that's what happens. Um, yeah, let's make it happen, Wolverine. Drop me a message on my inbox. You got me on Twitter. At I'm Jamie Martin. Just drop me a message. Um, Yates had a brilliant game today from the bench. Yeah, played really good. Really pleased. Um, Chaloba, maybe, um, but whether he'd want to leave, I'm not quite sure. Um, any news on our, no, nothing new at the moment. Looking like, um, it, he's going to leave, but I would say probably Crystal Palace. Uh, Morgan Gibbs, what, to start the next game? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, maybe get some minutes in against, um, Grimsby. Doubt it, but 
be good to see one of you get some minutes against Grimsby, to be honest. Maybe get him a couple of goals if he can. Um, that's that being said, not easy, obviously. You know, you've still got to perform. Um, so three games in the Premiership, we played like a team that is just starting to gel. I mean, look, and, and I spoke to a certain guest that's coming on for us for an interview in a couple of weeks who you have all tried to guess but only a couple of you have guessed correctly um and he said to me he said four points out of nine that's pretty bloody good for you you're starting in your premier league your first three games four points win draw and a loss unlucky not to win you know so um will as well thank you for your donation i'll get to your question but yeah for me four out of the nine pretty good um and yeah, just got to keep it up, haven't we? Um, evening, Jay. Didn't catch the game. How was MGW? Very good. Um, you know, he looked brilliant from the get-go. There's always going to be a lot of pressure because <clears throat> he could play well, realistically, by our standards. But the media um, and everybody else will be looking at him and going, 25 million. Oh, we're expecting this, this and this. And then they'll go... Oh, well, hold on. It could go to 40 million. So let's look at him as a 40 million pound midfielder. No, let's not do that. Um, he was really good. You know, he was crucial, made some good passes, strong. I'd just play him in that number 10 position next time and have Dennis on instead because we needed a goal scorer to come on alongside Johnson. But Johnson was brilliant. I thought Johnson came out of his shell a lot <clears throat> and he showed off something that was, um, it was nice to watch because I know that a lot of people got gave him a lot of stick. Um, you know, which, it, but it was just good to see that, you know, he was back, you know, performing and getting a goal because that's what he needs for his confidence. And I think there'll be no stopping him now. I think he'll get loads of goals. And if any of you actually saw the angle from where he scored that goal, it was really difficult. It wasn't an easy angle. So, uh, Will, thank you for your donation. But to answer your question, Morn Gibbs White, very good. Um, how about Awani? He should have been the one to be substituted instead of. I think both of them should have come off. Um, I think probably Awani should have come off anyway as he did, but I would have replaced him with Dennis and I would have put MGW in for Lingard. So that's what I would have done. But Cooper knows why he's done it. There's going to be reasons. Um, he's certainly not daft and knows better than me. So trust him. Trust him. Um, evening, Jay. It's a pity about Nia Carte being out for a few months. It is. It's a big loss, massive loss. Um, but that's... Um, yeah, that's just one of them things we're going to have to get used to. But the worst thing is, as well, he's the paciest centre-back. I mean, this guy was beating midfielders in races in training. So, you know, I would say it's a big loss in regards to pace and what we need in a defender right now. Um, Forrest maybe having to dip in the market for a loan or um, for someone that's going to cover them for the next six or so months. So, um, didn't say Warrell was the weakest link. Yeah, I mean, he might be weaker than others, but they've all got things they need to improve on. They have all got things they need to improve on, but we don't want to say um, Worrell needs to do this because he's homegrown and people are scared to say that. So that that's not a nice thing to admit, I know, and I understand. I know, I know how everybody feels about this because nobody wants to talk about Worrell and go, he needs to improve or do this because we all love Worrell, but there's things in his game that need to change. But that will happen. That will happen. Door, stop scrapping. I know what you like. Um, can Kiate play centre back? Definitely. Um, he played really well today when he was on. He's massive, he's huge. Um, didn't have awful pace either, so maybe it's an option. Maybe it's an option, but um, I think Worrell's good enough for the Premier League. People are saying he's not, I think he's good enough. Um, but I just think there's a good few things he can change. There's a good few things he can change. Um, but um, that'll come in time. That'll come in time. Um, sounds like something. Nah, well, no, nah, I don't think so, mate. Don't think so. Um, NFFC player watch team for Grimsby. Oh, tough one. I mean, Hennessy, Biancone, Beso, maybe give Warrell a run as well. I don't know. Um, that's a tough one, really. Um, Oh no, maybe Kuyate. Um Kuyate, Warrell and Mbeso in the middle, Biancone right back, wing wing back, and then Toffolo maybe left wing back. I, that's a lot of young lads coming into that equation. So I don't know. 134 of you in, please click the like button. Um goes a long way. Um if you can just very quickly hit it. Um obviously we're trying to hit 
2K subscribers at some point, but we're nowhere near there yet. So we're going to focus on this. But just a just a like will do for now if you can. Um, of course, we would have taken a point, but it's so sad that we didn't take all three. Of course it is. You're going to be disappointed. Who wouldn't be? Um, but equally, you should look at the good things that came out of that and look how close we were. Um, but I don't think that Lampard's a very good manager. And I was very, very brutally honest about that on Talk Sports. So feel free to message me or inbox me on Twitter uh, and I'll send you the video. Honest and very honest. Um, two points dropped out of one point gamed. Yeah. I think we probably dropped the two, um, to be honest. It felt like that, but I don't know whether that's me being a fan or me being um, a professional on that one. As a professional, I would say a point gained, but as a fan, I'd say a two points lost. Um, my passion lies in different places with that one. So, yeah, it's tough, but, um, you know, these two big games that we got, I was saying it to the guest, I was saying, you know, maybe... But well, we've got to turn the afterburners up after Tottenham and Man City. Not saying that we don't give our all against those two teams because, you know, who knows, we could get a point. I doubt it. But if we can get a point, that'd be nice. Um, but after that, you've got Leeds, you've got Bournemouth, um, which are the games I won't be going to, unfortunately. But they're two games that we need to be getting the three points in each game, um, you know, if we're serious. Because Man City and Tottenham, if they don't go our way, two massive, massive stumbling blocks you've got to, you know, repent for. So um, it is it is difficult, really, in that respect, that we've got those two games coming up and it's not the time we needed it. But, um, yeah, uh, it's it's tough. Warrell is 100% good enough. I agree. I agree. Um, but, yeah, it, it does expose him. Maybe the lads on the wing backs need to get back a bit quicker, but that's difficult because of the, how long were they last doing that, you know, running up and down that, that quickly? Um, can't be easy. So... Yeah, we are attacking with Nico down that right wing, um, MRBW2. You're right. Um, and that's the tough bit. So, you know what? <sighs> These things are going to happen. Steve Cooper will already know. He'll already know. Um, and he'll be fixing this. So, get ready for it. Get ready for it. Um, uh, I think that Tottenham Man City, is, they're going to be hard games. But expect to see an all right performance considering the games. Um, Lingard was hardly used at United last season, so it's going to take time. Of course, it is. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that, my friend. There's no doubt. Um, I think that I think that for considering considering how much game time he's had, the, the little amount of game time he's had to play, you know, for as long as he has, and you know, done it a decent as job as he has, you know, you got to give credit to him. But even then, that being said doesn't look fully fit yet he still doesn't look right um so things to change things to improve on for him but i'd start Morgan gibbs white next time or uh, maybe bring him on at least a little bit earlier um if that can be done so that's just my that's just my view of it um you know i don't think anybody played particularly bad to be honest um i just think there's places where people are getting exposed people need to change this and this um but that can happen. Um, do you think be good against? Yeah, I think we'll play okay. I think we'll we'll play good enough. Um, I say good enough. I think we'll play good to a standard where it's um, you know where it's maybe maybe try and get a point. But but Spurs at the same time, they, I think they've underperformed so far. I think they've got a very good team, but I know it's early doors. But they've underperformed. They've underperformed for me. Um, so. You know, they should have played better against Chelsea. They should have played better against Wolves. OK, they got the win, but there's things they've got to change. So, um, yeah, I think there's always a chance with every single game you go into. There's always a chance. Um, but obviously, you do have to be realistic and you have to say, look, Tottenham and Man City, likely it is you're not going to get the three points. So if you can get a point, then take it, you know. So, looking at some of these, um, only thing Joe Warren needs is pace, which you cannot teach or work on. No, I don't. I don't agree. I, I I don't agree on that because I think that the re and I, I understand why you're saying it. You need pace to do this, or you need it to do this. It's. I don't think it's as simple as that. I think it's not a case of okay, you've just not got pace, so that's it. 
I think this is a case of you've not got pace, so you've got to remember what I said earlier. You've got to make sure that you're a bit further in front of him. Um, you know, look at Anthony Gordon and Scott McKenna earlier. Scott McKenna saw Gordon running straight away. He was already a metre or two in front of him, ready to take the header or ready to get the ball. You know, even if he does cock up or he's not quick enough, he's there and he's ready. So it's more about preparation. If you know you're not quick enough, you've got to prepare to go and um, get in front of the, you know, the, the man quicker. Um, and if Worrell hasn't got the time to do that or the player's coming at him too quickly or for whatever reason he can't do that, then it's um, then it's tough. So, um, yeah, do you know what? I, I think that um, Worrell, things to improve on, but you can just look at Scott McKenna. Not the paciest of people, although Scott McKenna does have something about him. Um, and then he could probably go, just need to prepare a bit more. That's all Joe Worrell needs to do for me. He just needs to prepare a little bit more um, for that run. So without lying too deep, pardon me. So, um, you know, look, not awful um, things that can be done. Things that can be done. Always believe. Absolutely. And Steve Cooper, we trust. Um, oh, it's a late one today. I've been up since half half six this morning. Oh, I'm, I'm, it's killing me. It's killing me today. Um, aha, ha, yous are going to get battered. Yous, I mean, look, you know, you can you can laugh about that. I mean, you're probably going to get beaten tomorrow by Man City. Um, so I hope you enjoy watching that. But look, I don't know what the, the meaning for that comment was. You know, um, I actually really respect Newcastle, like Newcastle a lot. Um, so, um, but yeah, I just want to say, I just want to say the, the things I'm seeing at the moment... On Twitter, I'm disappointed about Worrell. Look, things he could have done better, um, you know, things that could have been different about that. Give the lad a chance, though. There's three games in, um, and okay, he didn't have the best game today or whatever, but there's the, times are going to change. He's going to improve. Just give it time. But some of the abuse that he's getting on Twitter, there's no need for it. Just remember, families of him are on Twitter. You know, um, friends, everything. Just, you know, the abuse. Being constructive is cool, but abuse is just ridiculous. Don't do not do that, um, guys. Don't be part of the problem. Please don't be part of the problem um, with the world in terms of trolling. You see it quite a lot on this channel, people trolling. Um, in particular, you know, even on Facebook. And I just want to clear another thing up as well. Um, someone saying on Facebook that... that door, you know, door on tour that he tells me not to stream. I just want to say that's a load of rubbish. Um, and for the person that made up those rumours, I'm really, really, really disappointed because, you know, me and door, we, we get on really well. I really like door because he's been an inspiration to me, as many of you know. Um, but people just making up really harmful rumours. And me and door had to have a chat about this, you know, to make sure that he knows that I haven't said anything to people. Um, but I just want to say to whoever was making up these little rumours, um, I really don't appreciate it. So please don't. Um, me and Wor uh, me and Worrell, me and Dor get on very well. Um, so leave it at that. We're all good. We're all good. And I just want to say a big shout out to Dor. Drop him a subscribe. And um, look, you don't get paid a lot to be a YouTuber. You do not get paid a lot to get be a YouTuber. And don't forget anything that I get donated, and I thank you all for it. Half of it goes to Mind Charity as well. So, you know, I'm giving away a lot of it. Um, most of it is essentially volunteering, you know. So, and and almost all the money that Daw will make or I will make it will probably be reinvested back into paying for streams. You know, it costs £20 a month to be able to stream. Um, don't forget. I, I pay £20 a month out of my own money to make this happen, you know. So, and Daw does the same. So, you know, show him some love. We're basically volunteers in this. We do this at a loss a lot of the time you know, because we enjoy doing it and we sacrifice, we sacrifice a lot of time to do this. So, um, <clears throat> listen, give the man some support. Don't be nasty. Um, let's just stick together. We're all Forest fans and we're just giving you guys a platform to talk on because we care. Um, so let's have a little chat then. Um, 4-3-3 prevents centre-backs being exposed and has Froyler to midfield. Potentially, yeah, it's a, it's an option. It's definitely an option. Um, whether Steve Cooper would want to play that, though, we'll wait and see. But he'll know. He'll know what to do. Um, 
But yeah, 4 3 is an interesting idea. I think that could be a good idea, maybe. Um, Joe deserves a bit longer, but the lack of pace across the bat line is worrying. Fly my eye then. Um, but look, this is what I've said again. Um, the, the, you have to look and you have to go, Worrell's not as quick as um, Damari Gray. Yes. Well, uh, Worrell's not quick as Anthony Gordon. Yes. Can Worrell get in front of them by a metre? 100%. Can he get in front of them by two metres? Yeah. So it can be done, but it's hard because he's being exposed on the right wing and the right, left wing and whatever, you know, but equally it's not an easy system to play for Worrell uh, in that particular area. So it's really tough for him, but um, if this is a game where I'd like to have seen maybe Panzo come in or, you know, and maybe have Worrell in the middle and Panzo on the right or et cetera. So, but that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Um, it's just about preparation. You know, if you see a speedy midfielder coming at you, get ready get in a good position and be ready to defend and don't just dive in, you know? So, um, but look, three games in four points, we're doing good. You started those rumors. Did you Wolverine? Naughty man, naughty man. That's proper naughty. That is, um, this is my first drink of the day. Um, would you believe it? So I'm sorry if I'm going for frequent drinks breaks, like it's a hot summer's day at the city ground, but, uh, Oh, yeah, um, um, I need some water. Um, if people are attacking Worrell, they're not Forest fans. He's one of our own, was fantastic. Yeah, he was he was good last season. Um, still thinks he could have improved on last season, but he was good, very good. Um, but listen, all these things we're talking about, please don't think um, that, you know, that um, Steve Cooper won't already be addressing this. He's probably already addressed it. So, um, yeah, you, you've... You've got to you've got to look at the game as people are now saying, you know, pace, it can be dealt with even by players that aren't as quick as that. You know, you don't need to go and buy Usain Bolt in a centre back position. You need to buy players that just have a good vision and are ready and preparing. I know as a former centre back that um probably giving that summit away there, um, that I would have to cover myself a lot. If I see a pacey player coming, I'm gonna have to run a second or two before because you know he's gonna come running past you. So that but that's it. That will be worked on. Um, but this will already be known, I'm sure. Um, let's have a look. How can Panzo come in? Well, I mean, he can't. Like, obviously, I'm not saying that he's going to come in, Phil. Obviously, he's on loan at the moment. I don't know if you can be recalled. So I would say, I mean, there's not really a lot I can do on that front. Um, but my suggestion would be just a little bit quicker. Um, but... But yeah, maybe there's, there's other things you can do um, to, to cover the the you know the pace weakness that you might have. Um, so um, yeah, it's um, not easy, not easy for Joe Worrell. I mean, try try against Demari Gray. Uh, sorry, Demari Gray. I've said it again. Um, very very good player, very very capable player, um, and um, someone that deserved to score today. Really, so nobody wants to admit that, but he had a very very good game. Very good game. Probably the best player on the Everton pitch, to be honest. I think Anthony Gordon was good, but even at times he didn't release quick enough. So um, don't forget, though, you can, if you want, you can join the stream. Um, I've put a, um, a link in the comments um, of which you can just click on. It's pinned um, and you'll be able to access the stream. Give us some of your thoughts. Have a quick chat with me. Um, but um, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Wolverine weight couldn't tell you did believe that I did start them. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't worry. I don't believe that you started those. I think I have a very good indication of who started it. Um, it's just forest Facebook groups can be a little bit toxic, to be honest. Um, and I appreciate the people that are saying nice things, by the way, because there's a lot of you. Um, but um, nasty, nasty at times. Considering we do this just for you guys as well. Uh, I, I'm amazed at the, the reactions some people have calling us tossers and, you know, annoying and stuff like that. If you want to go and set up your own, you can. Or if you want to come and give us your opinions, you can, you know. Um, come and say it on here. Come and say it on here. If you've got an opinion about me or anybody, come and say it on here. Um, it'd be good to have a chat with you. Um, positive today, though. Dean Henderson, brilliant. Um, Jono, got a goal. Um, and I hope for everybody that was just saying... He's this and he's this. I hope that you now know he's got that goal. So, um, Jono, well done. Um, I know that his mum and dad are very proud, um, as they should be. 
And um, you can see where uh, Jono gets his shooting boots off, can't you? Uh, you see, you see. Uh, Morn gives White and Yatesy. Yatesy looked decent. I was a little bit worried um, at first about bringing him on. I thought, just come off injury. Don't know how fit he's going to be. Uh, maybe bring someone like Froiler or, you know, Dennis on and put Morn gives White back into a 10. But um, Yates was good. Yates was really, really impressive. So um, fair play, Yates. Um, did very, very good. It is social media. Yeah, that's how it is. Um, Mangala looks like it's fatigue, I think Steve Cooper said. So, um, yeah, and I just want to say as well, today was a bit of a dream moment because um, I actually sat directly next to Colin Frey as he was commentating today, um, which was, yeah, dream moment because we usually sit just um, in front of him. Um, so, which is still a dream, but um, yeah, I, um, I love... I loved sitting next to Colin Frey today. Hearing him commentate just brought me back to being a kid watching Forest when I could never go to the games or would be on the way back from somewhere, you know. So, um, yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, and, and my dad will speak for me on this one, sitting in the Land Rover, um, listening to Colin Frey. Those were the days. Those were the days. Um, yeah, War uh, Warren, I agree. Anyone who's unhappy with four points after three games, definitely. Um, it's a really, really good record. And if you want to go by Tarby standards, you're halfway there nearly, aren't you? So, um, yeah, it's um, and, and the cup is a very good time to get players, you know, integrated into the squad, maybe get some uh, more game time for players as well. Morn Gibbs White probably didn't even train with the lads to have even gone out and played as well as he did. Impressive. Um, but but this is it. I said it from the start. You know, the benefit to having a player like Morgan Gibbs White is he won't need a hell of a lot of time to gel in. And um, you're seeing how quickly they're gelling in anyway. Um, but I think Morgan Gibbs White is a sensible buy because he doesn't take as long to gel in. So you've got to look at it from multiple perspectives. It's a smart deal. 25 million is a lot of money, but I think he's going to pay off and um, he's going to play through all the criticism. Thank you, Wolverine. Um, yeah, look. I sacrifice time with my family all the time. Um, I don't have to edit, thankfully, because it's streams. But, you know, when I go to do um, interviews, when I go to do podcasts, you know, there's some times where I'll spend um, the odd, um, you know, there'll be there'll be times where I spend a good while on, um, on, on editing things. There'll be times where I do things that I'm really not that good at and I'll have to learn and then, you know, to go and do it. So, um you know, look, we we spend a lot of time doing this, a lot of the time at a loss. And money doesn't matter to me. I'm 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 okay. I've got a job and I can do things and it's just a little part-time job and I'm okay. I live with my parents. But, you know, for people like Daw that doesn't live with his parents, you know, he lives by himself and you know, and he's not got an endless money tree like the rest of us. We do this because we care about you guys and we want to give you um a platform. So and and if you don't want that. If, if, if people don't want that, then people don't want that. Um, but we do. So we're going to keep it that way. Keep behind us if you can, you know, and when we ask you to like and subscribe, it's not because we want to be constantly goading you and asking you and annoying you for it. But if you can just drop a like, there's 121 of you in. If you all drop a like now, it goes a massive way, it pushes the algorithm up massively and it gets our club heard more in a positive light. So drop a like. And you will hear Forrest in a more positive light. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Um, a Lingard and a Wani, not very impressive. I would say, yeah, I think a Wani was more physical and I think he was better than Lingard. I mean, if you were to go by performances, different positions, I know. But um, but even then, he didn't release quick enough. Um, so, um, and I just want to clear one thing up. Oh, I'm getting it now. I pronounced Damari Gray's name wrong on TalkSport. I said Demariah. Um, I look like a right idiot. I look like a right idiot. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I'm sure. Oh, that's that's really daft. I've wrote down Damari Gray's name wrong and I've been reading it wrong this whole time. Oh, dear. Um, sorry, Damari. Damari, Damari, there we go. Oh, dear. I'm, I'm bad at this. I'm bad at this already. Oh, dear. Um, very, very good player, by the way, though, um, Damari Gray. Um, very, very impressed. Very impressed. Um, I am Wolf. Thank you. Appreciate you watching from the start as well. I know there's a lot of OGs um, if you like watching today. So thank you all.
for being here, staying with me and all yourself um, and um, supporting us throughout the way. We've got a lovely interview coming up with Gary Bertels, don't forget. This Monday, this coming Monday at 12.30. So you've only got to wait one, two more sleeps. Um, and then you'll hear me and Gary Bertels talking about his glory days at Forest. Some a bit about how he had to go on the dole. Um, some tough times for him and how he came back. So um, make sure you stream, um, yeah, tune in. And um, yeah, good things coming from that. That's only part one as well. There's a part two coming out. Well said, mate. Um, Forest fans need to get behind you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And look, we give you a platform. There's people in Australia. There's people in South Africa like Sean, you know, um, that don't really get the opportunity to come and watch Forest. So, you know, to be able to give them a platform to talk and have a chat with friends is really good. Um, so I just want to say, be kind. Be kind. And um, remember, we're connecting up the world through the power of YouTube. So, um, yeah. And Chris, thank you very much for your comment as well. Um, oh, and really, Lee, I appreciate you as well, you know, giving me the shirts and everything. You're a legend. And um, yeah, that really does mean a lot to me. So thank you. People are always going to be negative, but that's the world. We're going to bring Ralph on in just a moment to talk to us. Um, Barry Gertles. Barry Gertles. No, Gary Bertles. Um, love the content, Jay. You think Dennis will start against Spurs? Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, just a shame, and I know obviously abilities and everything, but um, it's a shame about, you know, Surridge and the amount of game time he's going to get. Probably not a lot. Very, very sad. Um, but we're going to bring Ralph in in just a moment. Um, Nico had a good game today, but Ralph, um, welcome to the stream. I don't know if he's actually on yet. Um, Hello there. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear him. We can hear him. Ralph is um, with us, everyone. I can't see him. Uh, but, got um, my camera problems. Oh, he's got camera problems. That's okay. Um, for now, we can do without it. You know, obviously, very upset. Um, <laughs> we don't get to see the awesome space merchandise that he has behind him usually. <laughs> um, but Ralph, talk to me. How you know? How are you feeling after that game? Because it's not an awful game. No, uh, I think that's just the point, Jay. Um, thanks for having me on again, by the way. And don't yeah. listen to any of the doubters on here. You know, you guys, all of you, Dor, you, Max, all of you, you know, you do wonderful work, giving up all your time, giving up a lot of money it costs to do YouTube as well. And, um, you know, you're providing a service for people who, you know, uh, who love what you do. Just ignore the doubters. But to your, to your question, um, I think it's one of those where, Immediately after the game, I was gutted. It really did. It almost felt like a loss because, you know, it looked like, you know, we we're going to be up in fourth place, uh, the, the way the, the league table stood. And then to get that, to concede that goal, it just brought us down. Um, but looking back on it, you know, we did really well. And that's, a, that's at Goodison Park. You know, we're playing away. It's, uh, you know, a point away. And, and like you were saying earlier, um, you know, four points from three games. You know, we've got to be happy with that as a newly promoted team that hasn't had the chance to gel yet. Mm. And I mean, you know, there's <clears throat> and, and, oh, and there's still a couple of players still to introduce into the squad. Obviously, you've still yeah. got Froiler to come in. Um, you've still got Dennis to come in. Um, Kuyate got a, you know, he dipped his toes kind of, if you liked, into the team a bit today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Morgan Gibbs-White not even had a full game yet and he played like that. Um, I do want to ask you, you know, obviously 25 million for Morgan Gibbs White. I know you were very vocal on that transfer. Yeah. Um, given his performance today, I mean, it's definitely no way of telling if he's worth the 25 million yet. I think you're gonna have to give it at least four or five games. Yeah. Um, but were you impressed with how he how he started off? Yeah, very much. Um and and credit to you, you know, I was saying this was a crazy idea if we could have got who off for 15 million or 12 million. Uh then you know this is a, that's a no-brainer, uh, and I still would like to see Oar coming in. But um, uh, yeah, I, I was so impressed with his performance when he came on. You know, he, he came in what was it yesterday? It signed just before the twelve o'clock deadline to to be able mm. to play. He can't have trained with the team because you know he was over at the pitch doing all the media stuff. Um, so to drop someone in like that, you think about what Toffolo was like when he was dropped in against Valencia and he looked like a duck out of water and we're all wondering whether, you know, he'd even be able to, um, to, to make the step up, which it looks like he has done now. Um, but for Morgan Gibbs white to just drop straight into the team, um, having not had a training session, not played with any of the guys, 
I thought he was fantastic. Um, I hope he can keep that up. And, you know, uh, Steve Cooper thinks that there's a potential for him to get even better as a player. Well, mm. you know, if that's the case, then all those people that said we should get him in, <laughs> then, you know, they'll have proved me wrong. But, and from what we can see, and I'm being completely honest here, you know, it's it's twenty five million pounds for a player like Morgan Gibbs White, and you know, obviously a lot of money. But I just want to say, you know, it's it's so hard to to be a player that is that has been bought for that much because he has no control over what his value is. You know, yeah. obviously agent does whatever, but it's not him. You know, he's just kind of you know just being played around with by clubs and. You know, he just goes out and does his jobs and the club decides what he's worth. And, you know, I think it's unfair, the criticism that's been put against him, considering he doesn't choose his value. Um, he's never been vocal about his value. He's always had a good attitude towards football, given his all at every team he's been at, regardless of whether he supports them or not. And, um, you know, Forrest have done the business. OK, Forrest has spent £25 million on him. But what does that mean? You know, it doesn't mean anything. Um, we can't say... We can't say what if he's worth twenty five million now. Um, maybe in a year's time we'll look back and we'll go. I think he's worth twenty five million. I think I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's going to be worth twenty five million. I think he's going to exceed that. Um, we're probably going to pay a bit more in add-ons because I think he'll do well performance wise. Um, but you know what? Him and Brennan Johnson, they got what? I think just. I mean, they got what? Nearly fifty. I mean, what? But I think it was Morgan Gibbs White got twenty goal contributions last season, and Brennan Johnson got over um, over twenty odd, so nearly fifty, if not fifty, goal contributions per um, sorry between them last season. Mm. Pretty, pretty good, pretty good work, I would say. Um, you know, and you've got both those players there, and then that's not even coming into account with Lewis O'Brien, um, Dennis. Yeah. You know, you've got some players that last season and the season before were absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they're young players as well. So I do want to ask you this question, and I will get on to um, some of your comments just as soon as I can. Um, what are your thoughts on the kind of youth approach? Because there's obviously not fully, you know, a youth team, if you like. There's no way at a youth team. But um, there's a lot of younger players in that squad, you know, Lewis O'Brien, et cetera, you know, the 23, 24 kind yeah. of region. What are your thoughts on that? Is that a little bit risky or do you think it's um, the right thing to do? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, of course it is risky because the majority of them will be players that have not realised their full potential and that they've not been uh, tested to the full potential in the in the Premier League. So there's always a bit of a risk on that. And, you know, you hope that the recruitment and the analytics that, that Dane's brought in and just the um, intuition, I guess, that Steve Cooper's got of who the right players are will work. And, you know, based on uh, who was brought in in the past... We've kind of got a lot of confidence in that system. It's worked really well. Uh, I know we're in a different league now, but, you know, the resale value. Players get better as they get older. If you're buying them for 22, 24, they're going, they should get better unless, you know, they get seriously injured. Um, and they're, you're going to sell them better uh, for a higher price once they've played more games in the Premier League and shown that they can do it. So it makes sense on so many fronts, especially when you think back to, you know, the last 20 years, the amount of journeymen were brought in that were in their mid and late 30s that, you know, we were never going to get anything. I think we may have lost Ralph there uh, briefly. Uh, Ralph, can you hear us? Not sure we have. Um, I don't know what's going on at the moment. Ralph seems to have um, had a couple of technical issues. Can you hear us now, Ralph? Yeah, I can hear you fine now. Oh, brilliant. Are you uh, everything okay? <laughs> yeah, did I drop out? <laughs> yeah, just dropped out briefly. But um, you you made a very good point. We do we have had a lot of journeymen over the years, just players that want a last payday. And um, I don't like to say it about former players, yeah. really, but Glenn Murray, for example, yeah. you know, last That's payday for him. Wasn't he? Yeah, he didn't really do a lot. Bit stupid. And um, he didn't really like Chris Hewton, as he said. Um, in the reception, I remember, and I was very, very shocked um, mm. about that. But um, looking at um, some of the comments, um, thank you very much, Declan. Very, very kind. Um, appreciate your comments. And you, Claire, also. Um, thank you. It means a lot to me. Ez, welcome to the stream, brother. I hope you're doing good. Um, guys, we're going to be ending the stream in 15 minutes, so make sure you get your questions in. And we're going to ask Ralph one last question. Um, but before that, Warren... Um, I met Mr. Bertles after the West Ham game 
after um, Clufford passed away. Historians believe that's where the saying, I'm not crying, you're crying, comes from. Really? Never knew that. And there's also the, the um, a bottle at half time is still better than a, a Gary Bertles performance. There's also that one as well, which I first heard the other day. Um, but listen, Ralph, um, and that's in no disrespect to Gary Bertles because he was wicked. But um, Ralph, last question I do want to ask you, centre-back situation, lacking pace. But I want to know your thoughts on what I suggested in terms of doing what McKenna does more often, just preparing a little bit mm. more um, for a run from those attackers. You know, the likes of Damari Gray and, um, you know, and and um, Anthony Gordon, you know, it's not impossible to to beat them, um, maybe not necessarily pace-wise, but, um, but they could just prepare, maybe run a, a metre in front and just a little bit before like McKenna does. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, not every premiership defender is pacey uh, and that's because they're a bit more of an intelligent player and they'll um, or maybe have some a bit more experience that just means that they uh, they don't have to have that pace you need some pace in your defense but I think with Worrell it's more his decision making uh, sadly and I don't know whether he can improve on that I hope he can um, I'm just starting to get a feeling that I mean <laughs> dropped Yatesy in today and already he looks like a Premier League player Worrell doesn't yet uh, hopefully it'll come, but there's no room for sentiment. If he's not up to it, you know, the, um, is it Chiati? He played most of his games for Palace in the centre half, so you know he seems like a good replacement there. But it seems like uh, Cooper wants to get a replacement centre half in, uh, which means that perhaps doesn't have confidence in Bianconi either. So what does that worry you a little bit then? If he doesn't think that Cuyate, I mean, obviously it's early days for Cuyate, so maybe we could see him play against Tottenham mm. in that bit. I mean, he's what? He must be at least six foot five or six foot six. He's yeah, absolutely he's huge. Um, what What are your thoughts? And I know there's a couple of people leaving for boxing, so have a good night if you are um, leaving in South Park. I appreciate your comment as well. Um, but, you know, yeah. Do you really think that Steve Cooper is going to take Worrell out of a Forest side? Because there's there's definitely some sentiment there, isn't there? I think there is, but only so far as he will give them the opportunity and then it's next man up. Um, and, you know, he's made him captain. He's put him in straight away uh, when arguably there's a better defender there. I mean, I would have thought Bianconi coming in for what's in nine million. Um, mm. There's a suggestion that he should be a pretty good defender for us because uh, he can play a centre half or uh, or out on the right. Um, I, I think at some point Cooper is going to have to acknowledge that you know that penalty decision in the last game came because of you know a rash uh, sliding tackle, um, and this goal um, in this game came because of um, him not having the pace or, or not having the, um, the the intelligence to know you know to to get that that kind of gap in between the player. And the ball, but uh, Cooper can't can't cover up for him forever. If he's not going to make the mark, he's going to have to drop him. Yeah, definitely. It's going to come to a point where the decision's going to have to be made. But still, time. He's only a young lad, I suppose, to a yeah. degree. Um, and there's things that he can improve on that I think are improvable um, that you don't have to to worry about too much. And of course, you can't really fix pace, um, but you can fix your preparation. So yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think he's going to do it. I think Lingard's going to do it as well when he's a little bit more fit. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But Ralph, thank you for joining me. You've been an incredible supporter of our stream. So appreciate you um, coming on this evening and um, looking forward to having you on again soon. My pleasure, Jay. Thanks for all you do. And everybody watching, if you're not already, smash that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button. Ralph knows how it is. Um, you're a legend, my friend. Thank you for joining. Um, that was the amazing Ralph, everybody. Um, really, really, really like having Ralph on as a guest. Always talk sense. And I did send him, um, Mr. David Astbre, um, a link. But unfortunately, um, I don't think he saw it in time. So, bit gutted. But Dave Asprey, I love you anyway, my friend. You're a good man. And um, we'll have to catch up and have a little chat um, soon about Forrest. But... Having a look at some of your comments. Um, yeah, the way we conceded it was because they were playing Route 1 football, 86, 87 minutes of doing the same thing, um, just hoping for it. Um, and then they got it, really disappointed. But Dem uh, I'm going to say it again then. Damari Gray was, you know, unlucky not to score earlier on. So to be honest, unfortunate, of course. Um, but 
but we know where we need to improve on now and we know what our weakness is. You know, um, and I wouldn't say long balls is um is a weakness. I just think there's if they're playing it for that long, they should have been getting used to doing the same thing over and over again because because Frank Lampard's tactics were extremely boring and uninspiring. I don't rate him as a manager. I said it to Jamie O'Hara earlier. I said, oh, they need to get a proper manager. And then he said, what do you mean a proper manager? Well, I said, well, Frank Lampard's not a proper manager. And he was, and I said, there's unlimited resources at Chelsea and Derby. He mentioned a transfer embargo. What Jamie O'Hara didn't mention in that whole thing, and I like Jamie O'Hara because I think he's honest about Forrest and he's honest about football. I think he's good. But he didn't mention the fact that Lampard spent £212 million on transfers at his time in Dar uh, at Chelsea, did he? He don't forget also the millions he spent at Derby and also the incredible wage budget they had with the loans. Don't forget that if it wasn't for Chelsea, Derby wouldn't have been in the position they were. So he had unlimited resources. And even during the transfer embargo, he had unlimited resources in terms of ability. You know, they're talking about, oh, well, he got Champions League. That should be a minimum for Chelsea, considering they won it not long ago. So, you know what? I think for my, for my response to that, I don't think Frank Lampard's a proper manager um, because he hasn't been through the same process of the likes of Steve Cooper. That doesn't necessarily... You don't have to go through the same process. But but look at Cooper. He's He's been a coach for a long time, you know, and he's learnt the trade, not just jumped into it because he's played under a, a few good managers or whatever. You know, so, um, but that's my honest thoughts on it. I, th I really like Frank Lampard, but I just don't rate him as a manager. Um, let's have a look. Give Worrell a Blake. Wasn't long ago, teams like West Ham. I mean, look, I'm not going on at Worrell at all. I just want to say, I'm not going on at Worrell. I've already said to everybody, I think he, there's things he can do um, that are improvable and he can do that won't affect him in the long term. I think he'll be fine. I think it'll only affect him positively. So, um yeah, I, and yeah, I agree, Russell. I think in a couple of weeks, he'll look good. Just has to improve on a couple of those things. So, but that's it. Um, we're approaching the last five minutes of the stream, everybody. So please do like, um, if you can, there's 60 likes. Currently, there's 102 of you in. That doesn't add up. That means 40 of you haven't liked. Oh, my goodness. Come on, guys. Be a saviour. Drop a subscribe. Drop us a like. Do your thing. Um, it'd be great to chat to you all. Um, fancy a 4-3-3 next week potentially, people are suggesting it um, I don't think Forrest will part the bus but I think they'll be playing very defensively maybe uh, they won't want to be um, getting a bad goal difference um, Omar back in November so still a long time to go um, Sam Dash 95, thank you good to have you all the way from Saudi Arabia um, big fight going on in Saudi Arabia tonight, as I'm sure you're aware and could probably hear. Um, Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk. Um, and I've got Usyk to win that. As much as I want Anthony Joshua to win, um, and I think he'll come back as a much better fighter, um, I'm still a bit concerned um, uh, if, if he'll beat Usyk. I think Usyk better technique. But that's boxing. That's boxing. You don't want to know my opinions on that. I'm more of a UFC man, to be honest. Um, yeah, while we're learning on the job, um, yeah, it wasn't his skill that kept Everton up. It was just luck, really. Um, and I just want to say, I said this to Everton fans because I know I got a, couple, a bit of stick from people saying, a couple of Everton fans at the ground saying he's a good manager. But I said this, I think you're a very good team. I think you're a very good team. Um, look, did, Everton are a very good team and they've got a very, very good set of players. A very, very good set of players. But I will just say that they need a manager that can utilise them the best. And in my opinion, Frank Lampard's tactic wastes the ball too often, possessions wasted too much, and um, Demar De nearly Demari Gray and um, and Anthony Gordon and you know uh, maybe um, the likes of Alexander Iwobi need to be given the ball a bit more instead of just hoofing it up. That's Saturday League standard, Sunday League standard. You know, stuff that we used to do when we were kids. You can't do that at this level. Um, so for me, that's why I don't think um, Lampard's the right manager. But back on to Forrest. Um, look, that's incredible. Selling your first car to go to the Bernabeu in 1980. Look, Mark, people can disagree with your opinion. And that's cool. You know, um, I know I might not agree with how harsh people are, but your opinion's your opinion, Mark. And we always value that. So um, don't think we don't value your opinion, Mark. 
don't worry. Still love you, my friend. You're a Forest fan. You support this stream. Uh, and I appreciate all the work that um, you've done to support us as well. So your opinion's your opinion. We're giving you a platform, no matter how controversial it is. Have your opinion. Do not be scared to have it. Uh, once Lingard is up to fitness, excited to see him. Definitely him, John Owen, and Morgan Gibbs White be good. Do you see Lingard and Morgan Gibbs White in a um, in a Forest side though? I've spoken to a couple of people who reckon they'll play alongside each other, um, but I've also spoken to another couple of people that don't think that's possible. Let me know what you think. Um, you gave us your back five for Grimsby earlier, Jay. Who would you have in midfield and up top? Um, midfield, chucking Cole back. Um, I'd have Froiler in, Cole back in, and Kuyate, maybe. Yeah, Kuyate. And then up front, uh, Mighton and Surridge. Mighton and Surridge. Um, maybe give Morgan Gibbs White a bit of game time post 70. But yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. But that would be what I would do personally. Um, but not on the coaching staff, so I haven't got a chance of giving my opinion. Um, love the UFC, Leon Edwards. Yes, championship fight tonight. If you're all about um if you're all about your English fighters, which you should be, you know, obviously English. Um, but he'll be fighting um Kamaru Usman. Tonight, I do think Kamaru Usman's going to win. I think he's going to smash him. Um, but he's a very dominant champion, is Kamaru Usman. But back onto football. Back onto football. You're going to do this to me. Um, what is with Jed Spence? Wasn't in the Spurs squad today. Do you think we'll see him at the City Ground next week on the pitch? Yeah, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if they put out players that, not necessarily players that aren't good or um, or anything like that, because they're going to put out a good team either way because they want to get the three points and they need it. Um, but for me, yes, yeah, Spence probably make his first appearance, but it's disappointing considering how well he did last season, you know, but you made your bed, now you lie in it. You know, there's a lot more to Spence leaving Forest um, than I think meets the eye, but he's an ambitious young man, wanted to go to Tottenham and Tottenham wanted him. Don't think Conte wanted him, but Tottenham did, so, but that's just how it goes. That is just how it goes, but listen, people, um, we're going to end the stream in just a moment's time. So I really want to thank you all um, for joining. Um, I'll be in Grimsby hopefully Tuesday night. I'm just going to have to see if I can do it. Um, no promises really, to be honest, on that front. Um, likelihood is I probably won't do it, um, but I will try my best. Um, and listen, it's been a pleasure to bring uh, the stream to you. I know a lot of you are leaving for the boxing. So thank you all for joining when you did. Um, that was a bit of a post-match review of West Ham. Nia Carte is going to be out for months. Richard's back in November. Mangala's got fatigue. Um, Forrest played decent today. Unlucky for not getting the three points. Um, as a fan, I would say two points dropped. As a professional, I'd say a point gained. So not a bad game overall. Joe Worrell, let's keep behind him. Keep singing his name. Keep positive. And remember, don't abuse him. Don't say anything ridiculous on Twitter. Please don't send abuse to players on Twitter um, because players have a mind like we do. They have a mental health like we do. Um, and um, one thing can trigger someone, you know, into a real bad period of mental health. So please be kind, um, be constructive, of course, but do be kind um, and have faith in the players because they're going to keep working hard to make sure that you're all happy and to make sure that the money you've spent on getting a seat is going to be worth it. So thank you all for joining. Have a great night. Been a pleasure. Warren, Robert, Jack, everybody that joined. Take care now and good night. Thank you all very much for joining. Been a pleasure.